Fire in the hurry. Cedric, I, I, I'll go ahead and start us off just as far as um, you guys coming off the bye week. You know, Matt was speaking about how pleased he was with the way you guys practiced and telling the coaches to, you know, not be complacent and approach moving forward as a 0-4 team instead of 4-0. Well, where are the players when it comes to that, especially off the experience that you guys got off of last year when you had such a fast start with tailspin towards the end? How, how, how did you guys approach the bye week, the energy and practice, and how that's going to help you going into this game against the uh, series? Yeah, I think you hit it right on the head. Um, you know, one big thing that I tried to emphasize as a leader this week was not getting complacent. Um, like you mentioned, that kind of happened to us last year. Uh, had a 9-1 start and ended 9-5 uh, to end the year. So obviously we kind of, you know, kind of fell off at the end there. Um, so it was something that I kind of emphasized throughout the week. Like, hey, this isn't a week off. We're going to come in with the time that we have here. And we're going to work hard just like any other week. We're going to get after it just like any other week. We're going to bring the same energy and all that and, and really kind of approach it like we still have a game this weekend. So um, I'm, I'm proud of the guys of the way that they worked last week and coming into this week um, and just ready to keep it going and keep the season rolling. And your next opponent, Syracuse, I mean, look, you scouting report on them that you guys have seen on film. What type of formidable opponent, opponent are they going to be for you guys this Saturday? Yes, um, I think they're a pretty interesting team offensively run. Um, pretty interesting scheme, but a lot of it is to really um, kind of get their quarterback into space. Um, he's obviously a great runner, um, a guy from Charlotte. I'm kind of familiar with him. Um, but, yeah, their, their, their scheme is definitely to kind of get him uh, the ball in many different ways. Got a few different um, passing game aspects and, and obviously run the ball uh, with the running backs that they got there. But I think one of the main focuses um, this week is definitely stopping that quarterback and, and controlling him. Cedric, um, you said earlier, you know, going going about the bye week practices like it's a normal game week. Was there any sort of itch to want to have a game, you know, last Saturday? Was there any kind of sense of I wish there was a game on Wednesday? Uh, I wouldn't say there was an itch wish we had a game because uh, I, I appreciate these bye weeks, you know, especially my body. Um, but like I said, we, we come in and, and we approach it, like I said, any other week. Uh, we use it as a week to get better. You know, we, we look at it as an advantage. You know, we don't have to play this week. We look at it as a week that we can come in here, work on the fundamentals, and just get better at football overall. So, like I said, the intensity was still high, but uh, we definitely appreciate it having a bye. Do you find any more or less advantageous having it, you know, early, like week five, in comparison to having it maybe later on in the season? Um, you know, I'm not really sure. You know, I think always having, you know, some type of week uh, during the season where you can kind of, you know what I'm saying, give your body a rest on the weekends could be an advantage. Um, you know, it, it, it really doesn't matter to me when it's, you know, the beginning of the end of the season. Max said yesterday you guys cross the board and get a lot better. So I'll ask you, you don't have to give me numbers if you want to, but I hope you do. On a scale of 1 to 10, where do you think you guys collectively have been so far, and what does it take to get to a 9 or a 10? Um, so far, I'd say we're playing like seven and a half, eight football. Um, I think for us to, to become those nine tens, I think, you know, we, we have to get rid of, rid of the small things, the little errors in the game, um, whether it's, you know, defense, you know, giving up leaky yardage or a touchdown here or there that shouldn't have been given up, or maybe even the offense closing out games or whatever the case may be, really just kind of putting our foot on teams next is, is really the next step that we need to take to be a 9 or 10 team. Um, obviously, we're playing good ball. We're winning games uh, pretty handedly. But I, I, I've yet to see us kind of really just whoop a team from start to finish. And I think that's what we need to do consistently to kind of get to that 9 or 10 level. Do you get a sense you guys are building toward that? I do. I do get a sense that we're building towards that. Like I said, guys are having high energy. Guys are, are, are learning and understanding, and as the season going on, it's just getting better overall. So I think we are on our way to that. Said I know I know Gary Schrader was a private school kid, but did you your pass ever cross in seven on seven or anything like that? Yeah, I mean, so um, so I played for two teams in high school in seven on seven. So the first team uh, that I played with called the Carolina Stars, I actually played with him. And this was back in my wide receiver days. So I remember was, the Stars he was throwing me the ball a little bit. Um, so we have cross paths a little bit. I'm, I'm not sure if he remembers me or not, but, you know. Who, who did he play for? Do you remember? Uh, he played with the Stars that year. Um, after that year, I'm not sure if he, you know, still played. I actually think he might have went on to college because 
he's I think he's two years ahead of yeah. me. So, but yeah. When you have a quarterback of that size um, and, and has that kind of ability, how do you all adjust defensively? Is, is it as simple as making sure someone is spying him always? I'm sure it's a lot more complicated schematic than that. Yeah, um, like I said, I think it's just a, a, a scheme thing that we're prepared for. Um, we kind of have things built into plays um, that are a person who's kind of de designed to, you know, spy the quarterback or have the quarterback if he pulls the ball on this certain player or not. So just having that in our scheme and also just everybody knowing that he is a threat running the ball. So we have to have our high eye tennis up for him to, you know, pull the ball or scramble out of the pocket, uh, whatever the case may be. Did your eyes bug out when you saw that he ran for 195 yards? At Purdue. I mean, that's a wild number. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, like I said, it, my eyes didn't bug out. I mean, when you look at the film, I mean, he is a real threat running the ball. I mean, he's got great speed, uh, great cut ability. I'd say he's a bigger kind of body face. quarterback. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a very skilled guy, very talented guy. Um, so that, that's why I say if, if we can contain him, I think we'll have a really good day defensively. I got another sense question for you. I asked Mac yesterday if he notices a difference in this, in less a sense of panic on the field defensively as opposed to before. Perfect example was Pittsburgh. You guys give up two touchdown drives, but there was no panic that maybe spiraled into more touchdown drives. You guys were under control on the field and took care of things. You sense that early on. That's who you guys were. Is that maybe one of the key differences between now and last year? Yeah, I mean, I think you kind of mentioned this when we were up at Pitt, you know, the, the I think last year we kind of, you know, might have got down on ourselves or might have started pointing the fingers um, when things happen. I think this year is, is a totally different approach. You know, something happens, we're coming back to the sideline, we're talking about it, we're figuring out what happened, how we can adjust to it. Um, but not only that, I believe we have a, a different level of confidence this year with this team, you know, that if something happens, we're going to be all right. We're going to get it back. Uh, we're going to make up for it. So I think, you know, those two things kind of contributes to us just staying in there and keep fighting throughout the games even when bad things happen. As a fault, every time we ask you a question about something being different defensively, you always go to confidence. You say it every time. How powerful is something like that? Uh, it's, it's extremely powerful. I think when you're not confident, you play a little timid, you play a little bit scared, you move slower, you're thinking too much. Um, when, when you just have confidence, you have a certain swagger. And I think it, it's, it's very contagious, and I, and I believe it just gives you your best and be able to play the best when you're confident, you know what you're doing, and you believe in yourself. Said so y'all have, a, you have a, a run of home games here. It's only like one away game into November now. It, is the way that it, it ended here last year with Georgia Tech and NC State, is that still bothering you? Yes. And, and is that part of sort of – the motivation, did you sort of have to, I don't know, re-up is not the right word, but sort of like go back and like, you know, the whole we want to protect home type mindset, have you, have you re-upped that or, or yeah, something I mean, like that? I think there's there's a few things that, you know, kind of make this so important um, for us. Um, I think first, you know, like you said, we, we lost to Georgia Tech last year. I'm at the end of the season, lost to NC State. That's two years in a row now. So I think, you know, one, we, we have a certain, you know, energy of get back um, for those games. But not only that, like I, I mentioned earlier, the complacency, and it, it, it's not happening this year. But not only that, we want to go from good to great. That's something that I've also, you know, kind of mentioned and talked about here before. We don't want to be a, a 7 8 win team. We want to be a 9 10 11 win team. And to do that, we have to be consistent week in and week out. It doesn't matter if we're – nine and one or whatever the case may be, we need to be consistent week in and week out and come play our best ball. So on Saturday, obviously you paid a lot of attention to the Syracuse Clemson game, but were there any other college football games that you got a chance to, you know, pay attention to a little bit? I know a few ACC teams played, but were there any other games that you were kind of looking at like, oh, that was interesting? Yeah, um, I watched the USC Colorado game. For, I was going back and forth between that one and the Clemson one. Uh, I got to watch uh, the uh, Georgia and Auburn game a little bit. Um, got to watch LSU and Ole Miss a little bit. So definitely got to watch um, a little bit of football. It was, it was kind of refreshing to actually watch it this weekend as a, as a spectator. Yeah, I was about to actually ask you that. Like, how refreshing is it to watch it, not just as studying, but just enjoying the game? Yeah, yeah. Like
like I said, I think this weekend I definitely tried to not really focus too much on the football side of things. I tried to clear my head and definitely kind of just watched it on the spectator side and just enjoyed things. Did you watch any Duke the other day? Yes, I did. That did was, you rip for Duke? <laughs> the reason I ask is because that was a big debate. The reason I ask that's a big debate about a lot of fans. Like they can't see themselves rooting for Duke, but you guys play Duke, and if they win, it adds value to a win over them down the road. Do you look at things like that at all, or you just yeah, yeah. can't root for them? If, I, if I'm being honest them? with you, I don't think I was really rooting for anybody that game. You know, honestly, I was just fascinated to watch and see, you know, what was going on, what was Duke doing, you know. What's making them a lot better this year, you know, even though they lost that game, they played a, a very competitive game. And some could argue they had a big opportunity to win that game. Um, so I was definitely more watching that game on the scouting side of things than the spectator side. As a defensive guy, what did you think of the LSU? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was it was an interesting one. It definitely yeah. was. It definitely was. Did you feel for those guys? Play that that big hit that one guy got on the uh, QB from Ole Miss was. That was the highlight of my weekend, I'm not gonna lie. Sid, when, when you think about the hard change of years here, when you think about Tez's situation, just you personally, do you consider that closed now, that he's not coming back? <clears throat> or do you look at it like that's ongoing and this still could be a chance of him playing more than maybe the ball game? Like, it, how do you view it personally in terms of his status? Um, me personally, I mean, I'm really not sure what else more we can do at this point. I mean, I've heard talks of, of different things and stuff like that. Um, but I'm just kind of in the mind space that we probably won't have him for the year. Um, but you know, as a team and as a, as a brother of mine, I try to keep him encouraging, keep him going, keep him uplifted. Uh, I know it's a tough time for him not being, being able to play ball, but just keeping him uplifted, keeping him happy. We. Uh, actually have a blessing to have him on the scout team um, offense, so he's giving our DBs great looks uh, day in and day out. Pretty good scout team. Um, yeah, that's a pretty good scout team player right there. So, um, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure really what's going on. That's really out of my hands and, and out of my control, but just try to keep him uplifted and, you know, hopefully something, you know, changes and can happen. All right. Thanks, Thanks Seth. Seth. Appreciate you.